Well, they've only gone and done it again. Topaz have just released an upgraded version of Gigapixel AI and it's even better than ever. Just when you think this game-changing software can't be improved, they bring out another upgrade and this one has two brand new features that will certainly help me and many others to produce even better images. So join me as we take a walkthrough of the latest Topaz Gigapixel AI 2023 upgrade. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. Okay, so here we go. I've opened up Photoshop and I've actually downloaded from the Topaz site a couple of images. Now these are images that you can download and play with. You can actually download free of charge and uh, play with it for a while before you decide to commit uh, to purchase. They'll also give you the settings that they recommend you use so you can see kind of the point in the right direction is where you should be going to process your images. A lot of people think that Gigapixel is just to enlarge, to upscale. In fact, what some people don't realise is not only does it do that, but it also improves the image, sometimes dramatically. So we look at this one, close to my own heart, it's just a wildlife picture, and uh, what I want to do now, let's just say we want to double the size of that. So we go to Gigapixel, open that up, and that will come in. Now, one thing I have to tell you, for all the wonderful things that uh, Gigapixel do, the one cost you have against that is the rendering is still quite slow. But when you think what it's doing in the background, especially to a very detailed image. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my cursor visible so you can follow all the tracks where I'm going when I'm doing this particular work. Right, on the top here, this here gives you an option to toggle in the original and already you can see what it's doing without me doing anything. It's already improved the image dramatically. These are the various views that you can have. There's a single view, there's a split view. I will be able to then move the slider along and that gives you an idea of the before and the after, which is quite good. The side-by-side -side view, and you can see a comparison view there between the original and the one that's just uh, rendered. And one of my all-time favorites is a comparison view. What this does, it brings four different versions of your image in. Over here, we've got uh, the AI models. And in fact, there's six now. They've added another one, which I'm going to tell you about soon. But there was, there was five, there's now six. And what you can do, if you notice at the bottom here, it's actually showing you the various versions that it is actually processing at the moment. Now, I notice it's got two there for lanes. Now, what I can now do, because there's only room for four, you can actually change it. We'll highlight the, the one that's doubled up, and then we put a different one on the art and CG. And you can mix and match them as much as you like. Then it's just a question, basically, of looking to see which one you prefer. Now, to me, that one's over-processed. That one, too. Um, the low resolution is nice, but I like that slightly brighter version there. For me, I would pick the lines version there. And uh, so that, if I just wanted to just have a, a double up on the size, I can save that right now. Uh, there are other tools you can play with here uh, if it's not quite right. As it happens, I'm more than happy here, but there's a suppressed noise, that's obvious, it takes noise down, the blur down. Um, other tools down here, which is more for people, uh, and I'm going to bring that in next to you. Uh, up here is actually the sizes here, you, the scale sizes. Um, what you can do, you can, you can actually reduce it by uh, half, you can double it, take it up to four times, six times, or by using the width and the height, you can put your own size in. You can actually nominate your own size. And this down here is telling you what's just happened. Originally, that's the original size of the image. That's the new size. That is the model that you've chosen to do it in. So you just simply apply that. It then takes it back into Photoshop and you'll have a double sized image, which not only is uh, double the size, but it's a better image altogether. So let's they will do a toggle, we'll take off the gigapixel adjustment and you can see the difference there by, by removing the gigapixel layer, you see the one underneath which is not so good, put the gigapixel on there, you can see it's done a great job. So that's the first one. So let's have a look at one where we have some people. Now you can see this is a nice group image, but it's rather small, you wouldn't be able to do a photograph to give to these people, you know, unless you wanted, to, wanted something for the phone, I suppose. But if you want to do a print for that, then you need to do something with it. So if we enlarge it, you'll see it just looks 
pretty dreadful. They, all, they look all kind of uh, pixelated and, and blurred. So let's go into Gigapixel and this time I'm going to use a slightly different approach and the rendering here will probably take a little bit longer uh, than the previous one because there's so much more detail in this one. So it's coming where I left off uh, two times here with the uh, Art and CG uh, highlighted there, the lines low resolution and very compressed. Um, so what I'm going to do here I don't think two times will be big enough to do a decent image. So I am actually going to go on to, let's go up to six times. Let's just see what we can do here. You can move this around to show you various parts of the image. So I would actually put that on the faces. Now, as you can see, it takes a little while just to render. They're all rendering. In fact, these boxes will have a line that goes green when it's finally rendered. And you can then make a choice of which one you prefer to select. And it looks okay there. But it still just looks a wee bit kind of muggy. So let's go to the face recovery. This is this uh, tool over here. We put the face recovery on. It is now re-rendering, as you can see, taking a little bit of time there because it's looking at every individual face. And this system works amazingly. What it does is they've taken millions and millions of photographs and they use them uh, to, to kind of compare against what you're processing. And that allows the artificial intelligence to actually fill in Part of the image, that's not even there. If you just do an enlargement, then it just stretches the pixels out. And that's where you get your blurring from. By using this artificial intelligence, by the fact that it's actually being kind of compared against millions of images, it can actually come back and give you a really good impression of what the picture should have been. So looking at that, um, the to me, if I was going to select one, from there, let's have a look. I'm going to look along the line, but I think the lower res resolution there is a nice, nice image there. So we can highlight lower resolution and we look at the original and look at that. And that's where you see the difference. That's the original and that's six times bigger and improved. The only other tool here is a gamma correction, and that's something you would use if you had uh, kind of problems with highlights and shadows. There's not a question on here. So that's how you would do an image with people. I just want to talk to you about one other new feature which for me is absolutely brilliant and that is the HQ button. It's not relevant here because it's a low of a process. However, it's not unusual for me to bring some of my finished images in both on my wildlife and my wedding photography to try them in Gigapixel because it sometimes puts an extra tiny punch uh, on the image. And the problem I've got is on some of them it just over processes them, it just doesn't look great. So with this HQ button, what I can do is I can bring in those high quality images and by using that button, it puts a mild kind of pop on the image itself, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And that will be a game changer for me in future. So let's apply that. Okay, it's gonna take a little while to process up here as it goes back into Photoshop. And there you have the image and that could be printed off and the customers will be extremely happy. Now I'll come back to the first picture to show you the other brand new tool uh, which they brought out which is another another way of improving your images dramatically especially if you're upscaling. If you look at this image here again of the uh, tiger what I've done is I've actually increased that to four times and what's happened here is is actually that you can see the blocking there there's little square blocks there this fixed compression will allow you to reduce or remove that completely. So I'm going to move that up here and I'm going to take it up probably to two thirds of the way there just to see what the effect is. Now you see the little square block things here. It's updating again at the bottom. I will take the time to point out that you can have automatic fixes here. It'll actually by using these automatic buttons here, the program will pick what it thinks is the best setting to improve your image. Now, as you can see there, from the original to the fixed, the original, fixed, again, what an improvement. I can only recommend that you go at least download the free version. Uh, you can actually either have it as a standalone version where you can open it up in your application folder or you can actually download the plugin. It's so simple. Uh, it's an automatic procedure from Gigapixel. It gives you an option in the menu above to actually uh, put the plugins into either Lightroom or Photoshop. Another triumph from a company that stands so high on my list of 
must-haves for my photo processing. I'd strongly suggest you at least try it. See you next time on my Better Photography channel.